our meeting to order. Town of Charlton, Massachusetts, warrant for special town meeting Tuesday, October 8th, 2019. To either of the constables of the town of Charlton in the county of Worcester, greetings. In the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are hereby directed to notify the inhabitants of the town of Charlton qualified to vote in elections to meet in the Charlton Middle School, Oxford Road in said Charlton on Tuesday, October 8th, 2019 at seven o'clock in the evening for the purpose of taking action on the articles listed. And you are directed to serve this warrant by posting attested copies thereof, one at each of the post offices, one in Dexter Memorial Hall, and one in the Charlton Municipal Offices, George C. McKinstry III Building, in said town, 14 days at least before the time and place of holding meeting. Hereof fail not and make due returns of the warrant with your doings thereon to the town clerk at the time and place of holding meeting given under our hands this 23rd day of September in the year of our Lord, 2019. Signed by the Board of Selectmen, David M. Singer, Chair, Karen A. Spiewick, Vice Chair, William Borowski, Clerk, John McGrath, Member, Deborah Noble, Member. A true copy attested by Karen LaCroix, Town Clerk, posted as directed by hand by Constable Richard Fisk on 9-23-19. Please rise with your hats removed and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Before we take up the business of this meeting, I would like to review the procedures and protocols that we will follow. In terms of egress from the hall in case of an emergency, we have the two doors at the rear and there are egress doors on either side of the stage. For our discussion, all who wish to address the assembly must do so by going through the moderator. Please come forward to the microphone to be recognized and identify yourself, giving name and address, before succinctly expressing your views on the article in question. Respectfully, all discussion will be limited to the merits of the article, avoiding all personalities and issues that do not pertain directly to the article in question. For other than a voice vote, we will ask you to use your light blue voter registration cards which you were given when you registered. The front section to my left has been reserved for non-voters. We ask also that everyone remain seated throughout the meeting and that no side conversations take place so that everyone can hear the proceedings. If anyone should fail to cooperate with these established protocols, that person will be warned and then removed from the meeting if necessary under Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 39, Section 17. I thank you in advance for your full cooperation. Article 1, Appropriation of Funds for Unpaid Bills of a Prior Fiscal Year. To see if the town will vote to raise by taxation, transfer or borrow and appropriate, a sum or sums to accounts to be specified at the town meeting for payment of one or more prior fiscal year's bills not paid due to an insufficiency of appropriation or for other reasons or take any action relative thereto or thereon. Madam Moderator. Mr. Singer. I move that the following prior year bills not previously paid due to insufficiency of appropriation or late billing be paid from the following FY20 accounts as printed below. And those amounts are as you see them in, um, in your booklet. Is there a second to this motion? So moved. All right, we have a motion and second before us to pay the prior year fiscal bills not paid due to an insufficiency of appropriation. Is there a recommendation from the Finance Committee? Finance Committee supports this motion. 
Thank you. A recommendation from the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen supports this article. Thank you. Is there anything to be said on this article? If not, a nine-tenths vote is needed uh, in order to pass this article. We'll try for a voice vote. All those in favor of Article 1 as stated, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed by no. A unanimous decision in terms of Article 1. Thank you. Article 2, inter-intra-departmental transfers and or appropriations for the fiscal year 2020 budget. To see if the town will vote to raise by taxation, borrow or transfer, and appropriate from available funds, including so-called free cash, and or funds previously appropriated to other uses, a sum or sums of money to accounts and for purposes to be specified at the special town meeting, or take any action relative thereto or thereon. Madam Moderator. Mr. Borowski. I move that the following sums be raised by taxation or transferred, whichever is indicated below, and appropriated to the following accounts for any purpose for which funds may be expended from the latter accounts, and to authorize the Board of Selectmen or Town Administrator or his or her designated Chief Procurement Officer to enter into such contracts, including leases, and to take such action as may be necessary or advisable to effectuate the purposes of the, for of the foregoing vote, each item being considered a separate appropriation. Second. Are you going as printed below? Oh, I'm sorry, as, as printed below. Okay. Second. All right. We have a motion and second before us to raise by taxation or transfer the funds as indicated in the chart um, in your booklet for Article 2. Is there a recommendation, please, from the Finance Committee? Finance Committee supports this article. Thank you. A recommendation from the Board of Selectmen? The Board of Selectmen supports this article. Thank you. Is there anything to be said on the article? Mrs. Walker? Yes, Madam Moderator, I'm Kathleen Walker from uh, 96D Baker Pond Road. And I just have um, one question and one comment. Um, could somebody tell me how much we received in free cash this year? Um, I think our, our finance director can tell you that. <clears throat> one minute, this is on. It should be. $1,459,321. Okay, thank you. Um, because a lot of these are from free cash, but obviously there's enough. Uh, my second um, comment is that it's disturbing to me that all of these are lumped into one motion because although I may agree with most of them, I may not agree with all of them. and. I understand that it would take more time to explain each one of these and the rationale behind it, but I think town meeting is owed that respect. Um, I'm sure that the board and the finance committee understand all of these items and the rationale behind all of them, but we don't. So um, I'd just like to bring that up for a possible future changes in the way that this is done. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further to be said? Madam Moderator, Sir. Francis Fantasy, 51 Main Street, Charlton. Uh, my question first relates to the uh, first item, 110,000 free cash fund salary for new town administrator. Seems to me that our former town administrator uh, was appropriated her full salary in July and that, uh, not July, May, for July, and that she only worked uh, until October. So there should be funds left over. So I'm, I'm wondering why we have 110,000 uh, for a new appropriation. I'll see if we can get an answer to that question. Um, I, I'll ask our chief financial officer. As part of the <coughs> separation, for the previous town administrator? I'm not sure that, is that on? Just pull it closer. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, as part of the separation agreement, the town administrator was paid out a sum of money which would have wiped out the accounts that are listed here in the first four items. 
That's um, why they have to be replaced. Otherwise, you won't be able to hire an, a new town administrator. Okay, but we a we the question we appropriated funds for salaries, and the town administrator, I believe, was paid uh, kind of a liquidated damage uh, for a uh, early suspension of her her contract. So she, it seems to me those are two separate things that you c cannot use monies appropriated for salary for what well, they apparently have been used for. Um, a further comment or question? Uh, yes. Um, the third item, $90,000 contract obligations. You would like to know What the which contract contract? obligations are, yes. Okay. Uh, again, our financial officer might be able to give us that information. So contract obligations would be anything that um, could be settlements of contracts, could be um, contracts that came up during the year to have a specialist come in for something, architectural services, or anything that wasn't accounted for would come out of contract obligations. But because of the settlement agreement that was paid out, those funds that were originally in contract obligations have been completely wiped out. Well, um, may I uh, um, a further comment? Make a further comment. Um, the town administrator's contract provided for a severance payment of six months salary. It's my understanding that the selectmen agreed to pay her $400,000. That's, that's more than five times what she was entitled to under the contract. So why is a town meeting obligated to support a contract by the selectmen to pay funds that were not contractually due. Any further comment or response to that? Madam Moderator. Uh, Mr. Singer. The only comment I will make on that, because I, I still want to be careful about how I phrase things or what I might say. The bottom line is we actually were on the hook uh, to the former town minister for significantly more money, and there was a lot more to it, I think, than you realize. And realistically, the potential buyout amount could have gone as high as six to eight hundred thousand dollars, not the lower amount you're thinking. So that was the amount the board agreed upon in right. a mutually uh, agreed upon amicable separation. Mr. Mr. Singer. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Fennessy, a further comment, and yes. then I want to go to the next person. Yes, I, um, I'd like to refer Chairman uh, Singer to... Mr. Singer. Oh, Mr. Singer, sorry. To uh, Section 5 of the Farmer Town Administrator's Employment Contract, and specifically... Uh, this is, uh, you're getting into a personnel matter, and a matter that was uh, well, well, I, settled I, legally. I think this is I, a. It, I think it, we. Um, I think the meeting understands your concern. I think you've shared that. Well, I'm not sure they understand it because I'm not sure they have taken the time to dig through this. Uh, section, section five B, limits the severance compensation to six months' salary. But um, I think, I think we need to uh, hear from our town council so that we can, um, uh, you ha are raising some concerns, but there are limits to what can be discussed given the agreement that was made. So no, let's hear from I'm, town not, council. I'm, I'm not raising Mr. concerns. Fantasy, just, am, Mr. I'm Fantasy, raising, what I'm raising, I'm, Mr. Fantasy. Yes. I'm calling on the town council. Thank you. Um, no, I think it's a legitimate question. First of all, Frank, it's good to see you. It's been too long. Um, the Rob Lemansky asked this question at the last meeting. It was the annual meeting? Mm -hmm. um, and that buyout provision only applied in a very narrow circumstance where the contract had been extended. I don't have it. It's been too long for me to remember it. You really don't have it with me. But it did not apply to the, we were not during one of those periods where it was extended. We were in the actual contract terms. If you look at that, if you give me that, I can explain it more sure. carefully. I've got a copy right here.
Okay, what section is it, Frank? It's uh, section 5B, B. subsection B. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> and for the, for the town meeting. Um, in the event that the town administrator is terminated by the town before the expiration of the aforesaid term of employment, other than for substantial breach of this employment contract, the town agrees to pay the town administrator a lump sum equal to six months aggregate salary on or before the effective date of termination or employment. Um, and that's, it, it wasn't, she wasn't terminated before the expiration of the aforesaid term of employment because that only applied to uh, an extension if the board had not taken action. I, I don't see where that. Through the moderator? Through the moderator. I don't see where it says that in the contract. That well, particular contract was extended several times. It was renewed several times with, with amendments. And you have the amendments there in front of you, the, as well as the contract. Yeah, I, contract. Frank, I'm, again, you have me at somewhat of a disadvantage. If I had known the, known the question was going to arise, I would have taken another look at the contract, but I remember looking well, at it carefully before the annual town meeting, and this only applied in a limited circumstance, and we were not in that circumstance at that time. Why is it unlimited? Where does it say it's unlimited? I can't, what, what do you think? He yeah. wants to know why it was, uh, where it says it was limited. All right, well, let me, give me a moment. Okay. And through the moderator? Uh, well, Mr. Borowski? Just while Attorney Carrasco is looking at this, and it's fancy, I think, the important thing to note, too, is that that's around termination. The former town administrator was not terminated. She was not? No. So? There was a separation agreement. So separation it, agreement. Okay. And again, so I mean, being an attorney, I mean, I'm, you know, I don't want to split hairs with, okay. with like, legal with you, but that's All what right. it is. So, so this goes back idea? to my original comment. It, it appears that the Board of Selectmen took it upon themselves to enter a contract that had not been funded by appropriation. And now they are seeking the appropriation after the fact. The original contract provided for a maximum uh, severance benefit of six months salary. Right, and you instead, would, you would and stated instead, that. Which, which would have been roughly $75,000. Instead of that, we're, we're looking at $400,000, part of which has probably been paid, from what I gather, uh, because you're not asking for the full $400,000 here. So uh, I guess I have another question, which is the pot that was paid, if it was paid, where did that come from, since we haven't appropriated it? The, uh, our finance director has a further comment. The first four items that are listed here are accounts that were already funded and they were completely wiped out to pay for that $400,000 settlement agreement. This now restore, is request to restore for the remaining of the fiscal year to, in order to bring someone new in to have funds to pay a new person. If you do not fund it here, there is no way to fund a new town administrator. Um, Thank you. One for, well, I, 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 I think this is an issue that, that needs a little bit of exploration. If, if the funds were appropriated for other purposes, what you're asking for is, is to, to transfer those funds for a new purpose, which means that you're asking the town meeting to approve a $400,000 severance payment to the former town administrator. And it seems to me that, that that should really have been made clear by the selectmen before Madam they asked moderator. people to vote that money. Thank you for making your, your views known. The Mr. Board Singer? Is, the board was not asking for permission. That payment was already made. Correct. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Sir? Uh, Madam Moderator, Herb Moore, 88 Masonic Home Road. Uh, a global comment on the first two motions. I uh, thank the Finance Committee for moving close to a microphone. We could hear what was being said. Several of the comments, as well as the seconding, from the Board of Selectmen were not said close to a microphone. We cannot hear what they're saying. And they tend to say, Madam Moderator, they read a little bit, and then they talk over here of what's going on. Please talk into the microphone so that we may hear you. And the man in the middle happens to be a prime offender of that. So I would appreciate it if they could speak into a microphone so we can hear what they're saying. 
Thank you for raising that point of order. Um, we can, um, Mr. Cosgrove, are you set to answer, respond? Having asked for a moment, th this contract was amended. Several this contract times. expired in 2015. So there was an amendment, and that must have been what I was looking at when I gave my opinion to Mr. Lemansky um, when I didn't try and intimidate him. Um, <laughs> Uh, to his question of the, the, he had the same question. So he's ahead of you, Frank, somehow. I don't know how that happened. Thank you, Mr. Cosgrove. Mr. 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 Fennessy, you're out of order. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lemansky. Yes, Madam Moderator, good evening. Um, my comment is, is that, uh, you know, as uh, on American pickers, they call this bundling. And um, I would like to see items that are $75,000 or higher voted separately rather than voting on this entire amount at one, with one vote. Uh, so I make it in that motion to take these apart. No, number one, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight should all be voted separately because they're over $75,000 in funds. You are making that in the form of a motion to amend? Uh, yes, and I would have to give you that in writing. Or do you need it in writing? Because I'm not, I'm, all I'm doing is, is well, distinguishing. What, what, we, what we can do, what we can do is um, we can put a hold on those and we can vote the rest and come back and deal with them individually since each one is deemed a separate appropriation. Okay. Do you need that in writing? Uh, we, no. Okay. If, if there is a second. Okay. We have a, uh, a second to that uh, motion. Okay. And just so let's go through those again. One, three, four. four. Five. Six. And Anything that's over seventy-five thousand dollars. All right. All right. All those in favor of separating um, the money articles at seventy-five thousand or more to be voted individually, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed by no? No. Uh, we'll do a hand count on that. Would the tellers please come in to assist? And I need one more person from the Finance Committee, please. John, would you mind? <laughs> you're, you're at the end. Who are my tellers? Do I have a third teller for the center? I, but I need a third teller to double check the middle section. Okay. All right. If all those in favor of separating out the money appropriations that are for $75,000 or more, please signify by raising your blue voter registration card. Please keep it up until the counters have passed you. And we have a double count on each section. And you, um, okay. um, we have, did this side get counted, John, this table? No. Okay, I've got this side, so if you can count this table. 
Do you people a favor? Thank you. All right, all those opposed by the same sign? Uh, a motion to separate these uh, appropriations um, is accepted by a vote of 58 to 55. So we will go forward and look at the motion. First, by we will take all of the smaller moneyed articles as a group. That would be uh, the town administrator car allowance for 5,000. The flashing LED lighted stop signs for 4,500. The nursing services for 3,500. The retirement benefits for 13,367. And the retirement benefits for 8,438. All those in favor of accepting those appropriations as stated, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed by no? No. Uh, the ayes have it, and those individual appropriations have been accepted. We will now go back through and take each one of those that were placed on hold at $75,000 or more individually. We have $110,000 to fund the salary of a new town administrator. Is there something further to be said, Mr. Sage? Yes, Stephen Sage, 41 Lincoln Point Road. Um, in case there are other people here who are not real familiar, and I'd just like a refresher course, where does free cash come from? And I know it's not free. We'll ask our procurement, uh, I'm sorry, our finance director to give a very simple explanation of that. Basically, it's revenues that came over what was budgeted and expenditures that came under what was budgeted. It's certified at the end of uh, fiscal year on June 30th. Are, are those funds that departments did not spend what was budgeted to them? Correct. Some was of it. it Ambulance receipts that came in. No, town? Ge general fund. Just so, from the general fund. Just general fund monies that have either been returned back, not spent, or in excess of what was budgeted for on the revenue side. So we got more in than what we anticipated. To those departments in town, I'd like to thank you for being conservative in your spending, so that we have this kind of cash available to us that we've put in as taxes in the past. Thank you. Anything further to be said on this $110,000 appropriation? Madam Moderator. Mr. Borowski. Just as a reminder to everyone, if we don't vote this in, we can't hire a new town administrator. So I know, you know, after hearing Mr. Fennessy, there may be some concerns directed at the Board of Selectmen, and obviously that is everyone's right and responsibility around any separation agreement that occurred. But that should be taken up via elections or discussions at a board of selectmen meeting, et cetera, and judge us accordingly. We really need this money to hire somebody because Chief Macfield is being you know, kind enough to help shepherd us through until we can. But if this gets voted down, we don't have a town administrator. Thank you. Anything further to be said on the $110,000 appropriation? I would ask everyone to please take a seat so that we can take our vote. Folks at the back, please find a seat. Thank you. 
All those, uh, we'll try a voice vote. All those in favor of $110,000 to fund the salary of a new town administrator, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed by no. I believe the ayes have the majority. Um, that appropriation passes. $90,000 for contract obligations. Anything further to be said on that item? All those in favor of accepting, appropriating $90,000 from free cash for contract obligations, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed by no? No. Uh, the ayes have it, and $90,000 is appropriated. Uh, environmental services, $91,000 from free cash. Is there anything to be said further on this appropriation? All those in favor of this appropriation, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed by no? No. Sir? I do not agree with you on the first two. Um, we can count on this one. This one was closer. Um, I'll, we'll do a counted vote for the environmental services. All those in favor, please signify by raising your blue voter registration card. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All those opposed by the same sign? Thank you. Seventeen. Thank you. Uh, the environmental services appropriation of ninety-one thousand dollars passes by a vote of ninety-five to twenty-three. $75,000 appropriated from free cash to restore the Finance Committee Reserve Fund for emergency and unknown expenses. Any questions or comments on this? Ms. Walker? Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, I'm sure the Finance Committee spent it on a uh, well-deserved cause, but I'd just like to know what it was. Why are we, why are we replenishing this account? I will ask Ms. Um, our finance director. We had an unusual uh, couple of months with most of the finance committee reserve fund being drained. And I'll give you some of the transfers that were made. There was a special um, election for debt exclusion of $8,000. Um, planning board for some consulting services, 15000 Assessment center for a police sergeant, 10000 Town Administrator Search Firm for 15000 and Legal Services um, for LNG Committee, 50000 
um, that brought them down to 22,000 to get them to the remaining year. That's very dangerous, um, especially if you're going into winter now, that uh, furnaces can break down and other things that they may need to fund. Thank you. So the Thank normal you. amount is 75,000? Right. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Any further questions or comments regarding uh, restoration of the reserve fund for the Finance Committee? All those in favor of appropriating $75,000 for this purpose, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed by no. No. It passes and $75,000 will be appropriated to restore the Finance Committee reserve fund. The next item is $79,750 to be appropriated from free cash to fund the fire EMS union contract settlement. Anything to be said on this matter? Um, all those, Mr. Lemansky? I'm just, an explanation? Um, other than what is stated here, uh, does anyone have a further comment? Our finance director. That is the amount that we've calculated to settle the um, contract with the fire EMS union for this fiscal year. That was not in the original budget. Thank you. Uh, so does that mean that the, um, the amount that was set aside was inadequate and that, or, or the amount that was assumed to be uh, agreed upon wasn't agreed and these people came forward and made a complaint and then from that complaint there was a settlement for might as well call it 80 grand. This is for their regular contract negotiations. It was not settled at the time of town meeting so there was no amount set aside. You say Thank you that I think that answers the question. Well, if, if you, again, just bear, bear with me. Through the moderator. Please, thank you. Sorry, Linda. Through the moderator. Uh, Donna, did, did this money go to the, 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 the workers or did it go to attorneys? Through the moderator. It'll go to the employees. It'll go to the employees. Correct. Okay. And then aren't these funds really going to be drawn out of the, the, the account that, because the the income account that the the um, that that is just the operation of the ambulance service. The appropriation here states from free cash, Mr. Lemansky. Okay, so that means oh, if in fact there was money in the fund, would the money have come out of the fund? But because there was no money available, it's coming out of free cash. To the moderator. Yes. Um, there's no specific earmarking of the ambulance funds for fire EMS. When you do your budget, it's an amount of money that's to offset the total budget. It doesn't say for a fire EMS. Okay, so that's totally separate. It's totally separate. Okay, and then the income will just come in as a lump sum, say, here you go. Uh, so next May, when you do your town meeting appropriation in the article for the budget, there will be an amount, a lump sum amount being appropriated from that reserve of uh, ambulance reserve towards okay. the budget in its entirety. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anything further to be said on this $79,750 appropriation? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed by no. No. Uh, the ayes have it. $79,750 will be appropriated from free cash to fund the fire EMS union contract settlement. The next item for our consideration is $120,000 to be appropriated from free cash to fund other post-employment benefits according to plan. Any comments on this or questions on this appropriation? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed by no. The ayes have it, $120,000 will be appropriated to fund the post-employment benefits. The next item is $90,000 to be appropriated from free cash toward general legal services. Any comments or questions regarding this amount? Madam Moderator, my name is Ms. Rachel Hartwig. I'm at 2 Freeman Road. 
Um, through you, I'd like to ask the finance director, what is the total budget for legal services for town council? I uh, will ask Donna. Give her a moment to bring up those figures. The amount appropriated in May was $100,000. So far, there's been $45,794.80 expended, leaving a balance of 54205 Thank you. Uh, further comment or question? Um, I'd just re like to remind everyone that Article 7 asks us to appropriate another $300,000 for legal services for um, mostly, I assume it's going to be for LNG and VGG. Thank you. For That's your just comments. a reminder that we have to go, we have another article that we have to spend more money. So 90000 plus 300000 is a whole lot of dough. Madam Moderator? Um, Mr. Borowski? Yeah, it's, it's actually a great point, Ms. Harvard. Um, I just want everyone to be aware that this is our standard legal item here. So this is for, you know, Attorney Cosgrove, KP Law. This is the, in a sense, day-to-day -day operational work that gets done. The Article 7, to your point, was asked for for three specific causes that we can speak to later. But, but this line item is really just for general legal. And the other one I know, I'm sure that will speak in, in I, I understand that, but I just want everybody to know that there's more mm -hmm. you're asking us to come up with. Thank you. Thank you. Further comments or questions regarding this $90,000 appropriation? Mr. Lemansky? Yes, thank you, Madam Moderator. So if I'm to understand uh, from Donner's uh, uh, statement is, the first forty was it forty four thousand dollars that's been expended within the last ninety to one hundred days. Uh, did that go to to a regular town council or to go to a special council? Because all these other lawyers should be called special councils versus a normal town council for the simple reason is he does his normal work and you know usually runs what 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 was stated. So it would be clearer to the voters if we knew exactly where that $44,000 went. Uh, we'll see if we can get an answer to your question. I can only break out what went to um, the planning board for Merrick representation, um, Attorney Merrick, and that was 17000 that we've expended. 28,000, I just as in, in the general pool, could have been to Cosgrove, but it could also have been to KP Law, or um, we also use um, special lawyers for certain personnel matters, union matters, or. So they, they may be all general counsel, but they specialize in a certain area. Okay. I, Thank you. Okay, a further question or comment? Uh, the comment would be is, if, if we've got a higher KP, um, I would think if it's for a specific item, then that would be special counsel. And that regular work that, that, that Mr. Cosgrove does is town counsel. So, um, and again, we, you know, we're just trying to be vigilant here and, and, and make sure that we have a pretty good idea of where these thing, things are going. Thank so, you for raising thank those you, Donna, points. Thank you. Anything further to be said regarding the $90,000 for general legal services? All those in favor of this appropriation, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed by no? No. The ayes have it, $90,000 will be appropriated from free cash to general legal services. Moving on to Article 3, an amendment to the FY 2020 budget to see if the town will vote to amend the funding sources for fiscal 2020 budget voted at the May 2019 annual town meeting as follows. By reducing the amount to be transferred from cable RRFA by $90,000 and increasing the amount to be raised and appropriated by $90,000 or take any action relative thereto or thereon. 
Madam Moderator. Ms. Spiewak. I move that the town approve Article 3 as written. Is there a second? <coughs> we have a motion and second before us to approve Article 3 as written. The recommendation of the Finance Committee, please. FinCom supports this motion. Thank you. Uh, recommendation from the Board of Selectmen, please. The Board of Selectmen supports this motion. Could you repeat that? The Board of Selectmen supports this motion. Thank you. Anything to be said regarding Article 3? Mr. Sage? So at the town meeting, we voted to take funds from the cable RF, RRFA, but now we're deciding not to do that, but raise that 90000 through what means? Taxation or from some other place? And why making the change? We'll see if we can get an answer to your questions. <coughs> through the moderator. Um, our finance director. So normally you would do 90000 from the cable reserve. Um, that money comes from the money from um, Spectrum in, in the contract. The contract has ended and they're in the process of renegotiating. Normally you would have already that negotiated and the funding would be there. So in essence, there was zero, there's zero funding there to take the 90,000 from. So we have no choice but to take it from taxation at this point until we get the contract settled and we'll be a year ahead of the game. So the money, we won't run that close next, next year because the money will already be there before you have the town meeting, which is the way it should be. Thank you for that explanation. Any further comments or questions? Then a majority vote in the affirmative is necessary for passage. All those in favor of acceptance of Article 3 as written, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed by no? Aye. Article 3 passes in the affirmative. Article 4, capital items and related contracts to see if the town will vote to raise by taxation, borrow or transfer from available funds, including so-called free cash and funds previously appropriated to other uses and appropriate a sum or sums to purchase capital items and or for service, repair, improvement, architectural, construction, renovation, improvement and or other contracts relating to town buildings, facilities or property or to municipal services and to authorize the Board of Selectmen, Chief Procurement Officer, or other appropriate town official, board, commission, or committee to enter into such contracts or leases and to take such other action as may be necessary or advisable to effectuate the purposes of such votes or take any action relative thereto or thereon. Madam Moderator. Ms. Noble. I move that the town vote to appropriate the following amounts to the following departments respective accounts for fiscal year 2020 budget to be expended for the following purposes. Each item being considered a separate appropriation and to authorize the board of selectmen or chief procurement officer to enter into such contracts including leases and to take such other action as may be necessary or advisable to effectuate the purposes of the foregoing vote as noted in the table below. We have a motion and second before us that the town vote to appropriate the following amounts to the department's respective accounts for the FY 2020 budget and to be expended for the following purposes as detailed in the table in your booklet. Is there a recommendation please from the finance committee? FinCom supports this motion. Thank you. A recommendation please from the board of selectmen. The board of selectmen supports this motion. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments regarding Article 4? Mr. Sage. In the uh, past, if I can recall, we've always replaced just two cruisers every single year, it seems. Is there some unusual reason why we're choosing to do three this year? See if we can get an answer to that. Chief, would you like to respond? Thank you. So we added a traffic officer. Uh, if you've been out on Route 20, you've might have seen them uh, stopping cars with the volume of cars that we get uh, increasingly. 
as well as the number of calls over five years have actually doubled. So we're running more officers and more cars. So the fleet is starting to get aged. So um, this year in particular, we were we also had a cruiser totaled, and uh, we were able to replace it, uh, but we're we're still trying to catch up. Thank you. Thank you. Anything further to be said? Electric voting system. What does that entail? Uh, we'll see if we can get an explanation for that, too. We'll ask our town clerk. That will be a system that when you check in, instead of getting your um, colored card to hold up and having um, counters, you will, um, it basically looks probably half the size of a cell phone, and it'll have three buttons, um, yes, no, abstain. There'll be a um, video, I guess, above us with the article written and any amendments, and you just press your button. Takes, I think most town clerks probably give about a minute, um, and it's even too long. So it'll definitely speed up. We won't have to do secret ballots. It's, it's a method to make voting Understood. a little more accurate and efficient and would be very similar to what students do in school now in terms of taking an instant quiz or something. So we're joining the 21st century. Um, you might say that. <laughs> my other question is how many of these units does this $20,000 acquire for us? Because right now there's not too many people here, but last time there was a whole slew of people here. Again? Uh, yeah, the, um, there's two companies I'm looking at currently. Um, one's about 15,000, the other one's 20,000, both for a, um, a quote of 500. So that would basically get everybody in here. Um, the two towns of those two companies are local and we could always borrow if we thought we were gonna have an overflow room. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? If not, a majority uh, vote. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Singer, I didn't see you. Just one question for the town clerk, or, or maybe the town clerk can just correct me. Um, but I think there's also the opportunity, if the town does acquire the system, that the town could make it available for a fee to other towns, which could, over time, uh, recoup some money and bring some money back into the town by allowing other towns to utilize the system. Is that correct? Um, I guess that would be a question for the finance director. Could we? I don't know if we can do. I don't know how that works financially. Um, you know, to do that too much, it, you don't want to rely on borrowing them or giving them to another town if your town meeting is on the same night or the town meeting runs two nights. So you don't really want to use that as a, you know, method that that you do do all the time. Yeah, thank you. I wasn't thank implying you. it was as a method to make the money back. I was simply implying that there's an opportunity that the town could use it beyond our own use. Thank you. Any further questions or comments? Then all those in favor of Article 4 as stated and printed, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed by no. Article 4 passes with the necessary majority. Article 5, Maynard Fields Improvement ADA Requirements. To see if the town will vote to raise by taxation, borrow or transfer from available funds for the purpose of ADA improvements to the Maynard Fields in the amount of $170,000 or to take any action relative thereto or thereon. Madam Moderator. Mr. Singer. I move that the town vote to appropriate $170,000 to pay costs of making ADA improvements to the Maynard Fields and for the payment of all other costs incidental and related thereto. And that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the selectmen is authorized to borrow said amount in accordance with MGL chapter 44, uh, section 71 or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the town Therefore, any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to 
for the payment of costs approved by this vote in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by like amount or to take any action relative thereto or thereon. Second. We have a motion and second before us regarding um, making improvements to the main and fields to meet ADA requirements as stated. A recommendation, please, from the Finance Committee. Finance Committee supports this motion. Thank you. A recommendation, please, from the Board of Selectmen. Uh, the Board of Selectmen supports the article. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions regarding Article 5? Sir? Madam Moderator, thank you. Lucas Stevens, Chairman, of the, Lucas Stevens, Chairman of the Recreation Commission, 87 thank Oxford you. Road. Um, the reason that this is separate from other capital-related spending items is due to the fact that it originally was supposed to be coming out of stabilization, if that's correct. However, after sitting down with the Finance Committee, it was voted to by the Finance Committee and Selectmen to take it out as a borrowing article. Um, so about a year and a half ago now, we did receive notice that the facilities at Maynard Field, specifically the lower football field, have been out of compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act. And the um, violations include um, inadequate accessibility for the uh, bleachers, snack shack, and bathroom facilities at Maynard Field. Um, the $170,000 includes repairs and improvements for the snack shack, the lowering of the counter, um, the addition of an ADA compliant porta potty, um, a resurfacing with asphalt of the lower lot with the addition of handicapped parking spaces behind the bleachers, and the bleachers themselves with the addition of ramps and a new viewing area as well. We do not anticipate to spend the whole $170,000 included in this amount estimated was contingencies as well. Excuse me, contingencies, so thank you. Thank you very much for the information. Any further questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Sage, and then I'll go to Mr. Cloutier. Through the uh, chair to the finance committee, later on we, I noticed we have a million two hundred and forty-nine thousand in small change in our stabilization. Does that amount in our stabilization give us a good bond rating when we actually uh, go out to borrow money? We'll see if we can get an, an explanation there. Our financial director will respond. Uh, it would look better if it was higher. Um, However, it's not going to be negative for you. That's still a, um, a decent amount of money in stabilization. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cloutier. Roger Cloutier, uh, seven, uh, 17 Coburn Road. I, I was going to make an amendment to this to, to lower the amount before you spoke. Um, but may I make some suggestions uh, that they maybe look for a grant to see if maybe, um, I, I know somebody who works for a nonprofit and they had a company, it cost them $5,000, they wrote a grant, they got 55000 So maybe the town could get a grant. Uh, some of the other good ideas I saw at the, the meeting was have Bay Park build the ramps. Uh, most towns do that. It saves a significant amount of money. And try and get, you know, uh, uh, again, I'm just trying to get people to, uh, it's a lot of money and we're going to borrow it and we're going to pay for it for 15 years. Uh, so this is, uh, it's going to, you know, after, I re after I'm gone, you'll still be paying for it. So I I'm just asking, and, and I appreciate the fact I'm asking you to try to do what you can to keep it. I think 170,000 is obscene. We have to do it. I, I never doubted that for a second. I just doubted the cost, and I guess you assured me that there's a lot more to it than I thought. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for those yeah. suggestions. Um, okay, and uh, Mr. Lucas, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Stevens, another That's all right. statement. Uh, thank you, Madam Moderator, through you. Uh, Mr. Cloutier, thank you for raising your questions, all valid, fair questions. Like I said, contingencies are included. We do not anticipate to spend the $170,000. Um, I looked up a grant. Um, there is a grant for helping municipalities with um, certain ADA projects. However, the, the grant cycle recently closed um, when I looked it up and did my research. So unfortunately, you missed out for this fiscal year cycle. Um, however, like I said, we do not anticipate to spend the $170,000. Any leftover will certainly go back to free cash or be expended more appropriately where it's needed. Thank you. Any further comments or questions regarding Article 5? If not, all those, um, we need a two-thirds vote. Um, I will attempt a voice vote before we, we count. Uh, all those in favor of Article 5 as presented, 
Please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed by no. I believe we have the two-thirds necessary. Article 5 passes as stated. Article 6, to replace Fire Engine 1, a borrowing article, to see if the town will vote to appropriate $604,000 for the purpose of replacing Fire Engine 1 and for all other costs incidental and related thereto, to determine whether this appropriation shall be raised by borrowing or otherwise provided or to take any action relative thereto or thereon. Madam Moderator. Mr. Borowski. I move that the town vote to appropriate $604,000 to pay cost of replacing fire engine one and for the payment of all other costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the selectmen is authorized to borrow said amount in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 7-1, or pursuant to any other enabling um, sorry, uh, any other authority, and to issue bonds or notes of the town therefore. Any premium received upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this vote, lest any such premium applied to the payment of the cost of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of cost approved by this vote in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 40, Section 20, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by a like amount, or to take any action relative thereto or thereon. And you meant Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 44, Section 7, 1, and Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 44, Section 20? Correct. Okay, do we have a second here? Second. All right, we have a, a motion and second before us to appropriate $604,000 to pay the costs of replacing fire engine one and for the payment of all other costs incidental and related thereto as stated in terms of authorization of, of borrowing. Is there a recommendation, please, from the Finance Committee? Finance Committee supports this article. Thank you. A recommendation, please, from the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen supports the article. Thank you. Anything further to be said uh, regarding this article? Chief? Chief Ed Knopf, 46 Oxford Road. Uh, just to provide further detail on the item, uh, the current Engine 1 is a 25-year-old vehicle that is out of standard by the NFPA, um, meaning it is no longer a serviceable vehicle. It also has major um, flaws in it as far as safety. It no longer meets the standards for safety uh, for the firefighters in rollover capability, in lighting capability, and other essentials. That is all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any further comments or questions regarding replacement of Fire Engine 1? Roger Clutier, 17 Cloutier. Coburn Road. Again, I, I ask again that if there is a grant out there someplace, we, we try to pursue that. I mean, we need a new engine. I'm not arguing that. But, you know, we're going to pay for this for 15 years. Its life expectancy is probably 15 years. So, you know, it's, it's almost like leasing one. <laughs> so, anyways, I just ask that they try and... Thank you for your comments. Um, Mr. Lemansky. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, in general, I look at this article and we're, we're, we've got probably about 115, 120 voters here. And the request is to spend over half a million dollars. This article really, or any article similar to this in size, really should have been put off to the annual town meeting when we would have at least double the voters here in order for, uh, for, for this item to be totally look, looked at. And um, I think it puts a lot of burden on the voters here to make that decision. And that uh, really this, this vote should be put off to uh, the annual town meeting. Thank you for sharing your views. Uh, further comment, Chief? To answer Mr. Cloutier's question, uh, the fire department is actively engaging in grant processing. We do so every year. Um, unfortunately, when you apply for a vehicle, they base your uh, score, let's say, on the age of your fleet. With the uh, addition of the new tower that was received through a grant in excess of $1.7 million, uh, no, sorry, $1 million, and additional ambulances that are new, our score would not 
be able to maintain a grant for a vehicle, therefore, that we would not have a chance for a vehicle. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Mr. Meskus. Hi, Kurt Meskus, 72 H Foot Road. I would ask the financial team what would be the term of borrowing for such an item? The previous gentleman stated 15 years. I don't know where that number comes from. Uh, we'll get an answer for your question. Through the moderator? Yes. Um, we're looking at 10 years, and the payment's roughly about $70,000 a year. Um, and we also, the pre and the previous article would be about 20000 total of $90,000. Um, we have in FY 2021, the last payment on the town hall elevator, that is approximately 90000 in just principal. Um, so we should be able to move it in without much impact. As one comes off, these two will go on for repayment. Thank you. Any further questions or comments regarding um, a motion to replace fire engine number one um, at the cost of $604,000? This requires a two-thirds vote. I will attempt a voice vote, um, but we will count if necessary, certainly. All those in favor of Article 6, as stated, regarding replacement of Fire Engine 1 at the cost of approximately $604,000. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed by no. No. Well, that was, that was loud, but... Um, I don't, I don't think it was um, defeated the two-thirds. However, just so that there will be no question, we will count. Uh, all those in favor again, if you would please signify by raising your light blue voter registration card. And please keep it up until the counters pass. Thank you. Thank you. All those opposed by the same sign? Article 6 passes with the necessary two-thirds majority by a vote of 107 to 20. Article 7, Legal and Consulting Services. To see if the town will vote to appropriate a sum of money from free cash to fund legal and consulting fees or take any action relative thereto or thereon. Madam Moderator. Ms. Spiewak. I move that the town vote to transfer and appropriate $300,000 from for, for the free cash fund to legal and consulting account 0100-151-5870-0101 to fund legal and consulting costs. Do we second. have a second? Second. We have a motion and second before us that the town vote to transfer and appropriate $300,000 from free cash to fund legal and consulting account as listed to fund legal and consulting costs. A recommendation from the Finance Committee, please. FinCom supports this article. Thank you. A recommendation from the Board of Selectmen, please. 
The Board of Selectmen supports the article. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments regarding Article 7? Dr. Um, Howard. Madam Moderator, Robert Hartwig, 2 Freeman Road. And uh, I would like, if I may, uh, propose an amended motion. No change to the article, but simply to change the funding source from free cash to stabilization, which would, of course, require a two-thirds vote. Uh, I have that, and then if I may speak briefly to my reasons for that. Um, Is there a second to that amendment? Okay. Okay. First of all, quadrupling any appropriation uh, it's really an extraordinary measure. It's not something we do all the time. Um, free cash, for as long as I can remember, has typically been used either for capital expenditures or to replenish the stabilization fund. Very unusual to use it for any other purpose than that. Um, the same issue was brought up with Article 2. Uh, various cases are lumped together here. Some of us may favor pursuing all of those cases, some of us none of them. Maybe some of us favor one or two, but not the rest. So the lumping together makes it problematic from my point of view. Uh, there certainly is no guarantee that the town will win any or all of these cases. Uh, previous court decisions suggest that our chances may not be very good. And so I really don't think this article should be allowed to move through with a slim majority of maybe two or three votes, but really should require a rather stronger consensus, and that's the reason for proposing the change in the funding source. We'll take the um, amendment in writing. Thank you very much. Anything to be said on the amendment? the amendment regarding changing the funding source, not the uh, article itself, just the amendment. Mr. Sage? If we do that, does that mean the $300,000 would then be transferred into stabilization just to replace it? In the next article, instead of being 22666 it would be 322666 I will ask our finance director for a comment. That I believe that would be the intent of the Finance Committee. Does the Finance Committee wish to say anything in that regard? No, but that, that is what would happen. That, that 300,000 would just move to the next article and we would have to amend that article to increase it to the 322. Thank you. Further question or comment? Madam Moderator, um, Michelle Hicks, 10 Freeman Road. Um, Could you speak right up into the mic? Sure. Thank you. Um, the question that I have is um, the finance director spoke about the rating and related to the amount of funding that we have in our stabilization fund. What would having a stabilization fund under you know, a million dollars once we take another 300,000 out of it, what is that gonna do to our bond ratings and our ability to fund the other things that we already went through today in the previous articles? We'll see if we can get an answer to that question. Um, from the Finance Committee Chair, Mr. Kamal. Well, again, like we just explained, so, so we're going to take in this motion, if we took the 300 out of, all right, in the next motion, we're going to put it right back into the stabilization fund. So our stabilization fund at the end of this meeting will still increase by $22,666. So we're not going to hurt our stabilization fund nor hurt our uh, bond rating. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Any further? questions or comments regarding the amendment. Nothing further to be said. Um, a majority vote in the affirmative is necessary to accept the amendment that would move the cost of, um, excuse me, that would move the appropriation of 300,000 from free cash to stabilization. So all those in favor of making that change to stabilization funding, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed by no? No. I'm, I'm going to count, OK? Um, just to be certain. Again, if you are in favor, this is just the amendment, OK? 
All those in favor of funding the legal and consulting account from stabilization, please raise your voter registration card. And please leave it up until the counters go by. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All those opposed by the same sign. Thank you. Twelve. Thank you. The amendment passes by a vote of 77 to 35. We can now um, we can now take a vote in terms of Article 7, in that it will now read that the town vote to transfer and appropriate $300,000 from the stabilization fund to fund legal and consulting account 01001515870101 to fund legal and consulting costs. And as stated um, in the mover of the amendment, because it's coming from stabilization, we will need a two-thirds vote. Further discussion on this article as amended. M Ms. Madam Cloutier. Chair, Roger Cloutier, 17 Coburn Road. Uh, can somebody just maybe break down this 300,000 a little bit? Because I mean, it's just, it's bundled. And I, I, I know some people are upset about one thing versus another versus another. I, I've been trying to keep up by watching the videos and, and keeping up with the meetings. And I think I know how it's broken down. I, I'm not sure if everybody does. Does anybody want to comment on it or can they? I don't know. Thank you. I'll see if we can get an answer to your, your question. Madam Moderator. Mr. Borowski. So I'm not one to be coy. Uh, ultimately, here's what it's for. Yeah, shocker. Right? Um, there were three distinct asks. One was for approximately, again, the numbers may be a little off because it's, I, I'm, again, I'm going off memory. It was approximately $200,000 by the request of the LNG committee for both attorneys and consultants to review the proposed NEC site on Route 169. That was part one. Part two is a discussion around a renegotiation of the pilot agreement with uh, Millennium, also down on 169. There was a $50,000 ask by the planning board for, um, the, for defense of the subdivision for VGG. Uh, at the time, I had actually asked for an additional 25 to basically round it up to 300 to make sure that we had enough money for everything. So this is all bucketed, and as a reminder, the Board of Selectmen are basically control the purse strings for, for legal. So whereas one could be more, less, et cetera, th that's why they're all bundled together. But those are approximate amounts. We don't actually know how much it's going to cost uh, when, when, like when all is said and done, meaning that, that LNG, hypothetically, could come in significantly less. That initial number, and I see Frank uh, is down below, um, uh, Ms. Lombardi, I should say, that that number could be very, very different, but that, that large ask was the initial proposal that we first talked about. So we thought that that was the number that made sense for now. So Madam Moderator, Roger, does that work? Thank you. A uh, further question or comment? Yeah, Steve Corona, 17 Worcester Road. Yeah. Madam Moderator. The, the town is obviously being sued by several entities right now. I, I would assume, and the, and the townspeople could assume, that the Board of Selectmen are going to do what they have to do to defend the town on those lawsuits, correct? And you need the money to do that. 
Uh, does so, anyone wish to respond? Madam Honorable, the only comment I guess I'll make on that is that to Mr. Borowski's point, there's more than one item on here. Some would be legal defense, uh, which means, so Mr. Cronus's comment is correct in that regard. Um, but the other components of this, uh, to use Mr. Borowski's word, this ask, are more um, consulting and negotiations that are ongoing, and that's the actual bulk of it, which would be related to the LNG uh, siting and modeling that we were having done. Thank you. A further question or comment? No, that's it, no, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. For, for Anything not, else to be said, yeah. um, Ms. Spiewak? Thank you. I would just like to remind everyone how we came up with this number in general. Um, the Board of Selectmen and Finance Committee and Town Council and Town Administrator sat in one room for several hours. And you can watch the video if you're really bored. And the consensus was, this, this is what we know. We know all the ins and outs of what's going on behind the scenes. So I just wanted to point out that everyone in that room agreed this is what needed to happen. And I ask you to have confidence in everyone in that room. Thank you. Thank you. Further question or comment, uh, sir? Just. Um, Could you identify yourself, yeah, please? As a comment, uh, my name is Frank Lombardi, 20 Prindle Hill Road. I happen to be uh, the chair of the LNG committee and, and a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals. And I just wanted to um, comment on a, a large chunk of that, uh, of the funds, uh, as Mr. Borowski uh, said, would be for uh, LNG. Um, <clears throat> the way that it stands, I don't, I don't know if anyone's following or not, the way that it stands is that the town has very limited or no authority in terms of some of the approvals and siting process um, with, with the folks at LNG, it, it is, uh, goes through the state of Massachusetts. So a, a majority of those funds would be, it, it, the, the funds we've used so far and the majority would be for us to appear before the state uh, to address any safety, traffic concerns that the town might have. Um, the planning board, the zoning board of appeals, the, the, essentially the state can, can bypass all of our zoning bylaws uh, for this. So we don't necessarily know uh, the, the process is ongoing right now with the state. It probably will go going on for another couple of months. Um, the selectmen in the LNG committee uh, have been in contact with the LNG, the company that owns the, L the LNG project that wants to propose project as well as uh, the Department of Public Utilities which is uh, oversees the siting process. So um, depending on how our our, ex, our consultants and our negotiation goes would depend upon how much of that uh, that we would necessarily need to spend for for those items. Um, it, it I just want to note that uh, if if our our negotiations don't go that well or the concerns that the town must, may have for safety or traffic, if the company isn't doesn't willing to acquiesce to whatever those concerns are that we would definitely need to use the funds um, to uh, with the state in order to try to uh, make sure that the, what if the project goes in that it goes in safely for the town so that's the 200 we may use 200,000 hopefully uh, I I hope that we don't necessarily need to um, I think that we're all shooting that it, everything works out and we use substantially less than that. But not having those funds available, um, I think, um, wouldn't necessarily, could hurt our position uh, negotiating with those folks. So uh, that's my comment. Thank you very much for that explanation. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Spiewak. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Joe Spiewak, 90 Osgood Road. I'm a member of the Finance Committee, but I'm speaking on it as a citizen right now. One of the reasons this, this number is bundled um, is the fact that, and you've heard it several times, but I think it's worth repeating, is the fact that we don't have any idea how much money is going to be spent on any one thing at any one time. Voting down this article will assure the fact that we will drain all of the legal fund accounts and the contract obligation accounts that we have, and we will come back to another special town meeting at some point in the future to ask for those funds to be restored once again. The only people in town who can authorize spending money for council is the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen have an amount of money that will be available, thank you for voting that tonight, 
that they will be using in order to support all of the litigation, what we can see ahead of us, what we don't know is coming, and what may happen in the future. So as a member of the Finance Committee, I sat in on meetings where 300,000 was the first swag at what we were gonna need just for LNG. And then there was another amount asked for, and another amount. And so together, we all sat in a room and said, you know what, let's come up with 300 grand. 300 sounds good. As Mr. Borowski said, well, let's throw an extra 25 in there because we don't know. And we don't wanna come back to a special town meeting and ask for more money. And we don't wanna be in a position where if a subpoena is served to any individual in this town, whether they're a town official, an employee or otherwise, the town has no money to defend them. That is not a position this town needs to be in. So my ask of you tonight is whether you're for or against LNG, VGG, pilot programs, otherwise, please don't cut off your nose to spite your face. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, further comment or question? Um, John F. Booker, 30 Oxford Road. I, I believe um, Sleckman Singer said that most of that money was for not for defense, but in pursuing cases, not to defend cases against the town. Is that correct? I'll Madam seek Madam some Madam clarification. Madam. Mr. Singer. So, uh, yes and no. So, yes, the majority of the money was not for legal defense or, or litigation. The majority of that money, as uh, Mr. Lombardi had pointed out, was more for consulting fees and to support the town's negotiating position in the uh, LNG siting process, those negotiations, modeling for safety that we have to hire to have done. So the majority, I should speak in this, the majority of those monies, correct, are not for legal defense. The majority of those monies are for consulting fees to support the town in our negotiations for LNG. Thank you. Thank you. Further question? Um, my other question, I believe, is to the Finance Committee. Was that line item already funded this year and depleted? And if so, can you tell us what it was depleted by? We'll see gone? if we can get an answer for you um, from our financial director. So in May, there was 100000 appropriated for council, town council. That in, right now was all that we had to work with. In the previous article, we talked about having to replenish that because we made some um, expenses out of that. And I'll just bring it back up. There, I believe it was 17,000 um, was for Merrick, which is for uh, VGG. Uh, there was also remaining like 54,000, but 50,000 of that is kind of earmarked for um, LNG. LNG. Um, and 50,000 from the Finance Committee went to um, contract obligations because that also needed studies done, which is not legal, it's studies. That's why you see consulting in here as consulting and legal. Um, part of what they need is uh, transportation studies. Um, that, so it's not necessary, these are very above and beyond what you normally would be spending. That's why they're asking for a separate appropriation for this. There's three major issues. Thank you. Thank you. Just, thank you. Uh, further question or comment, Mr. Lemansky? Uh, 157 cents a drive. And um, I also serve on the uh, LNG committee. And this article, which is to cover legal and consulting costs for three different subjects, LNG, Millennium, and VGG. I can speak for LNG is if they do come to town, it's between estimate six and $800,000 a year. So the money that's being spent is money that we're, we're trying to do is, is do as much protection of that income as possible to make sure that it's the right number and also the main thing is to make sure that it's safe and the only other thing i can say for millennium is millennium again is another income uh en entity that the town will receive money from so it's not as if we're just throwing these dollars away these are these are dollars in that are investing in making sure that these assets at least those two will be producing the dollars that the town is rightfully entitled to. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that information. Anything further to be said regarding Article 7? Madam Moderator? 
Mr. Borowski? Just very quickly, we're living in challenging times. No one could have foreseen an extraordinary ask for, and quite frankly, a very complex and again, enormous uh, liquid nitrogen gas facility on Route 169. Nobody really could have foreseen that, well, how much is it really gonna cost to negotiate with Millennium? And you know, the third project, which I'm now referring to as a project which shall not be named, um, has, as we all know, taken on a life of its own. These, and to, to Mr. Hartwig's uh, question before around free cash, I went back and forth on that as well because really these are unusual. Um, things like this don't normally happen. That's why we have this ask. If in fact this is voted down, and again, that is under obviously the purview of this, uh, of this meeting. What that will mean is that we really won't have money to do those types of studies or to potentially you know, prioritize le you know, legal defense or, or to basically, we won't be able to get as much done as we need to. But obviously that is the responsibility and that is the, um, again, that's the purview of this meeting. I personally recommend that we need to go forward with this. Nobody likes to spend money. However, when you think about risk reward, what happens if we don't spend the money, even more specifically on LNG? So again, I would recommend voting this in. Thank you. A further question or comment? Um, yes, I just wanted to go back to the um, thing about where the money was before. The money that was appropriated tonight to restore the fees already was not into this account that we're funding right now, was it? No. no. So what was in the account that we're funding right now before? What was appropriated to that in the fiscal 2019 budget, and where did that go? To the uh, Mr. Kamasi. Oh, you are correct. This is a brand new line item. This was not in the May budget. Okay. The reason why it is a new line item, as, as was mentioned before, there were different groups looking for legal funds. And according to town council, only the selectmen can do legal funds, right? So that was the first reason to put, let's put it all into one account, right? The second reason to have a new account, as the finance director just said, out of that town council account, that's only for legal uh, expenditures. There are going to be, as was just re uh, referenced, there are going to have to be consulting fees, there are going to have to be, and so that needed to have its own account, right? To, to be able to spend for that. Plus, when the Finance Committee debated this, we wanted to make sure it was in an account that the selectmen were responsible for. I hope that answers your question. So, so prior to this new account, how did each board pursue their own legal expenses that they needed? How was that it had funded? To, it they had to come out of that general town council, all right? Or if they had a request for a consulting fee, it would come out of, say, contract obligations, which is a general catch-all phrase. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions or comments uh, regarding Article 7? Uh, Mr. Clue, Rod, something Roger else? Cloutier, 17 Coburn Road, through the chair. Uh, as Mr. Lemansky said, as a town, we can't be an easy mark for corporations to come in and not pay their taxes. And I think the Millennium issue is sort of that, where they're kind of deciding what they want to pay, and we don't think it's fair, and, and that's why we're trying to do this. So it, it, there's a, another issue here that you have to kind of consider that if we don't stand up to, to these big companies and at least get our taxes out of them that we're owed, then who's to say everybody isn't going to take advantage of us in the same, same manner? Just, just Thank you for sharing your views. Anything else regarding to be said regarding Article 7? Again, we are voting on Article 7 as amended, which would read that the town vote to transfer and appropriate $300,000 from the stabilization fund to fund legal and consulting account as listed to fund legal and consulting costs. As we need a two-thirds vote, we'll do a counted vote. All those in favor, signify by, say, uh, by raising your blue re voter registration card, please.
Thank you. Thank you. Please leave your cards up until they've, they've gone by you so that it, um, it can be accurate. And including the stage. Thank you. All opposed by the same sign. Uh, Article 7 passes with the necessary two-thirds majority with a vote of 93 in the affirmative and 23 opposed. Article 8, to transfer to and from stabilization funds, to see if the town will vote to transfer and appropriate a sum or sums to or from the stabilization fund account or take any action relative thereto or thereon. Madam Moderator. Ms. Noble. I move that the town vote to transfer and appropriate the following sums to and from the following accounts and funds. As noted below, with the exception of the first line, where that line should be increased to an amount totaling $322,666. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and second before us that the town vote to transfer and appropriate the following sums to and from the following accounts and funds. Uh, the first to read stabilization $322,666 from free cash, water stabilization $20,436 from water retained earnings, Water stabilization, $3,455,814.18 from water RRFA. And sewer stabilization, $323,355 from sewer retained earnings. A recommendation from the fin uh, Finance Committee, please. Finance Committee approves this motion. Thank you. A recommendation from the Board of Selectmen, please. The Board of Selectmen supports this article. Thank you. Anything to be said regarding Article 8? Yes, Ms. Walker. Thank, thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, just for clear, my own clarification, um, so stabilization right now is at a million two forty nine. Is that right? I uh, well, will check with our finance director. With the three hundred thousand you just took out, it's nine hundred forty nine thousand eight forty three seventy seven cents. Okay, and what, um, what percentage of, of our budget is that stabilization account at this point, approximately? If we can, we'll get an answer for that. I believe it's about 3%, 3.5%. Approximately 3, 3.5%. Three but remember, if we pass this now as amended, it's going it, to go, it'll go back up, up to right, where it yeah. was. I'm just concerned about, um, again, it's been brought up a number of times at the meeting about the bond rating, and I thought, I thought to have a decent bond rating, you needed a stabilization of 10 percent. Um, Is that the true? Through the moderator, Mr. Kamasi. Yes. Um, the 10 percent is a state suggestion. 
All right. Right. Our, our goal, I will tell you our goal as, as a finance committee is to get to that 10% to get to $3 million of our annual operating budget. Right. That's our long range goal. Now we're, we know we're not going to do it in any one year, right? Sure. In fact, if we pass this motion as amended, we will be adding $22,666 to the stabilization. So at least we're going up and not down. Right, I do believe we were at one point close to the 10%, so we've many years ago. Well, um, if you were, that was before my time. Right, it was a we'll we'll get there. time. Yeah. Give, us, give us another few years, we'll okay, get there. Okay, so I'm just concerned about comment. the bond rating and, and in, in getting there. So thank you for explaining that. Thank you. Uh, further comments or questions regarding Article 8? A majority vote in the affirmative is necessary for passage. We'll attempt to voice vote. All those in favor of Article 8 as stated, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed by no. The majority in the affirmative, Article 8 is passed as stated. Article 9, to rescind Potter Village Bond authorization to see if the town will vote to rescind unissued borrowing authorization of $500,000 for the Potter Village Bridge voted under Article 6 of the October 16, 2017 Special Town Meeting or take any action relative thereto or thereon. Madam Honor. Mr. Singer. I move that the town approve Article 9 as written. Is there a second? Second. Madam we have a motion and a second before us to accept Article 9 as printed. Madam and Moderator. I would like the um, first, the recommendation of the Board of Selectmen, please. The Board of Selectmen approves this article. And then you wish to make a comment or statement, Mr. Singer. Uh, just a request for our finance director to explain the article. Thank you. Our finance director, if you could uh, enlighten uh, those assembled here with regard to Article 9, please. Sure. Um, back in 2017, we appropriated a bond authorization for $500,000 to do the work on Potter Village Bridge, which got renamed since then, but that was the name of, that we used back then. Uh, that was primarily because this was a project that the grant was reimbursable, so you had to spend the money first and then you would get reimbursed. So in order to make sure that this, because this was crossing fiscal years, that we had enough money not to go in deficit at the end of a fiscal year before we got reimbursement, we did the bond authorization in case we needed to go out and borrow. Um, the project is now done and we have received 100% of the funds from the state, so we no longer need this authorization. So it's a housekeeping article to remove something that we no longer need. Thank you very much for explaining that. Further questions or comments? Ms. Yes, Walker. Uh, thank you, Madam Moderator. I just wanted to thank Mr. Singer for asking for that explanation so that one of us doesn't have to come up here and ask for that explanation. And I would just like to comment that it would be really great from my perspective if in future town meetings, if the Finance Committee could explain even briefly each article as it comes up from your point of view why you voted for it. Um, I've been at previous town meetings in, in another town where that was the common thing to do. And it does take more time, but it looks like we may be granted more time because we'll have these little voting things. So uh, that would be really great if you would do that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Walker. Anything else to be said regarding Article 9? Madam Moderator. Mr. Singer. If I may, just a quick comment. Uh, thank you, Ms. Walker, and to everyone here. The Board of Selectmen will uh, endeavor to take into consideration all the comments that were made on this article and others as to how they're put together going forward. Thank you very much. With nothing further to be said on Article 9, it does require a two-thirds vote but we will attempt a voice vote. All those in favor of Article 9 being accepted as stated uh, and printed, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed by no. Uh, it is a unanimous vote.
Thank you. Article, Article 10, social media bylaw. To see if the town will vote to adopt a social media bylaw, a copy of said bylaw being on file in the office of the town clerk, or take any action relative thereto or thereon. Madam Moderator. Mr. Borowski. Uh, to a brief comment, uh, the motion I'm about to make is slightly different than what is printed in your books. Um, there has been a, a, an addition after the final uh, words of, of the rest of the general code. So something new has been added, but I just want to bring that to everyone's attention. So Madam Moderator, I move that the town vote to amend the Charlton General Bylaws by adding to the general code a new chapter 167 entitled Social Media Bylaw referenced in the article, a copy which has been on file and available in the office of a town clerk during normal business hours since before posting of the warrant for this meeting, and an additional copy of which is printed in the back of the booklet available for review at this evening's town meeting, and to authorize the company which prepares and edits the general code to make such revisions and formatting and numbering of the sections of said bylaw as necessary or advisable to accord with the formatting and numbers of the rest of the general code, provided, however, that to the extent impact bargaining is legally required, no implementation of such new bylaw shall commence with respect to any member of the bargaining units represented by the Charlton Police Alliance, Charlton Highway Union, and or United Professional Alliance of Charlton until either agreement or impasse is reached through such good faith bargaining. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and second before us uh, regarding the establishment um, of a social media bylaws, incorporating it into the Charlton General Bylaws. Uh, as stated, a recommendation, please, from the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen supports the article. Thank you. Anything to be said regarding this social media bylaw in Article 10? Jordan. Hi, Jordan Evans, 122 Glen Echo Shore Road. Uh, I have some questions regarding the bylaw. Uh, I just need some clarity on a few things. Actually, I have like a whole list, but I'll try and keep it short. Uh, I noticed that you designate moderators for official town pages. Uh, who selects the moderator? And can there be multiple moderators? Because as the original creator of the Charlton Cultural Council's Facebook page, uh, we encouraged multiple users to post content as it came up to keep things fresh and constantly populated. Uh, I'll see if I can get an answer to that question. Someone on the board? Our, our HR person, uh, Jessica, are you able to speak to that? You will try. That would certainly be something that would be worked out once we, once we either approve this or, or not. Um, an appropriate Can you person, speak a little an appropriate, more into the mic? appropriate you. person would be um, selected from from each department um, to be the moderator for that department. Um, or that committee or whatnot um, and would be responsible for that for the content um, and it would need to go through all of the proper channels listed in the bylaw. Okay, so there would be mo multiple moderators by department as each department would be That represented. would need to be approved, yeah, right. Okay, thank you. A further question or comment? Uh, yes, for those of us who already have social media presences, do we need to get permission from the town administrator retroactively, or are we going to be, well, rather, are we going to be retroactively included in this? Do we still need to get permission because a lot of us use our social media accounts to engage with residents of the town of Charlton? Again, uh, do you have uh, a response to that from HR? All of that would need to be addressed once this is once this is approved. We would essentially have to sit down and talk about all of that. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, my next question is: Who designates what is a personal site under this bylaw? Because I run a Facebook page that. I use to interact with citizens of the town of Charlton to post election results, uh, the results of this town meeting, and other things as they come up in the town. But when I created that page, it was never meant to be a, 
I guess you could say a town identity. However, social media designated me as an official public figure on their social on Facebook, so I don't have control over that. Facebook designated me as an official public entity because they didn't want my identity to be compromised. Would I be retroactively, would my personal account retroactively become a town identity? I'm not sure. Um, Ms. Damascus? Kurt Damascus, member of the Technology Committee. The town officially needs to maintain its identity mm -hmm. and control over what the town does and what the town puts forward. It would be our intention in this bylaw that if you were to have a personal site and did not represent yourself as speaking for the town, but just providing information, then that would be acceptable. Mm -hmm. An example would be is in a neighboring town, an official left employment of that town and used the town seal on a personal site and it was very difficult for that town to regain control of that because there was no bylaw in place mm -hmm. to do that. Okay. Um, 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 I think our town council would like to offer an opinion regarding um, this bylaw. Well, uh, for one thing, to supplement uh, Mr. Meskus's comment, that no one can legally use the town seal without right. town approval and there are penalties for that. Mm -hmm. Secondly, if Facebook, and I'm not familiar with your account, but if Facebook, why Facebook would designate you as a public official, is that what you said they do? Yes, it's because I regularly speak out as not a public official, but I am known as someone who has a public title. Yeah, you, you should, I, I strongly recommend that you notify Facebook that you are not speaking as a public official and you should not be listed as such. You're, you're commenting as an individual. Right, but Facebook designates that so my identity doesn't get stolen because they see me as a worthwhile figure under their definitions. How would, through the moderator, well, how would Facebook know you're a public official? Because of the press that I've done as a private citizen in the past where people have brought up the fact that I am a public, a public official for a small town in Central Mass. All right, then, then through the moderator, all I can say is that that's a serious situation that should not exist. Facebook should not be doing that. And so do the best you can to have that corrected. And as Mr. Meska said, if need be, if you can't have them change your listing, in bold, all capital letters underlined at the beginning of every posting you make, that you are doing so as an individual and not as an official of the town of Charlton. That was actually one of my other questions. At the moment, I do have it say that I speak, uh, opinions are mine, I don't speak on behalf of any agency, board, or committee that I am a member of. It does say that. And I wanted to know if that was an appropriate thing as well to have. That's what I think we should do is not get focused on a couple of specific items, but keep our discussion to the purposes of this social media bylaw. Oh, absolutely. I just don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater in this regard, because I'm not the only person and town official who uses Facebook in this way to bring attention. Here at the Charlton Public Library, and that actually gets to another question, when we say town systems, do we mean all Wi-Fi as it applies to just the town hall, or those of us who are in the Charlton Public Library and the schools as well? We'll see if we can get an answer to your question which is a little more general. Kurt Meskis, member of the Technology Committee. And I, I don't really want to engage in a point by point debate here. It's, mm -hmm. it's not the place. The town Wi-Fi has public Wi-Fi access to it. And that is an unfettered um, access to anything. The town private Wi-Fi or the town official Wi-Fi is locked down and does not allow um, certain sites to be reached. If the administrators of the system were to find someone um, abusing the bandwidth mm -hmm. of the Wi-Fi, we would make adjustments to that. Okay. Is that 
It does. Right. Um, for, the, for the question or comment in general to this uh, social media bylaw. So are you saying this doesn't include our Wi-Fi over at the library, or does this policy apply to those of us who use our Wi-Fi? The Mr. Meskus? Be, being a general bylaw, okay. it will affect every department, board, and commission in the, co in the town of Charlton, and that's why it is being proposed as a strengthening from the policy is so that every board, commission, elected official mm -hmm. and everything is responsible to a common set of standards so that we may present a proper and united vision of the town to the community. Right. Thank you. A further comment or question? Uh, uh, I'm going to call on Ms. Noble first. Hi, Jordan. Hello. Thanks for all your questions. Um, Can you speak right into the mic, Deb? Thank you. Is that better? Yeah. Yes. OK, good. I think one of the reasons you have all these questions and the reason there is so much confusion is because we don't have a social media bylaw policy. So I brought this up to the town mm -hmm. no less than two years ago when an incident happened in a small town in Massachusetts where a member of the public safety made an inappropriate comment or, or a comment on social media and was subsequently discharged from her position. Right. So. When that occurred, I went to look and see what we had for a social media policy. We didn't have one. We had one to regulate electronic communications, but nothing for social media. When we got our HR director, I then brought it up again, going, we need some sort of social media bylaw so that the town can have responsible communications on social media with the residents. It has taken this long for it to finally come to fruition. Mm -hmm. But you know, one of the things we, we've talked about for a couple of years now is bringing Charlton into the 21st century. But without the foundation, without guidelines in place, we can't move forward appropriately. So this is the beginning of that. And it has taken two years. It has gone through the technology committee. Mm -hmm. It has gone through multiple departments. And it has gone through the attorneys. And I think it's important that we realize we're not trying to inhibit freedom of speech or freedom of expression, but merely what we're trying to do, what a lot of small towns and cities have done, and that's encourage responsible speech. There's nothing wrong with that. So we're not trying to say, oh, you know, you can't go and say whatever you want on Twitter or Facebook or, or any of the other sites. What we're trying to do is create a framework so that we can have a social media presence out there. And thank you for all the work that you do on your pages, because I do find them very insightful and very informative. Thank, thank you, you. Ms. Noble. You're very welcome. Uh, one more comment or question, and I'll move to someone else. Oh, you? no. Um, I still have other concerns, but I don't want to log jam the meeting. Absolutely not. So um, I'm all set. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for raising those concerns. Further comments or questions? Hi, Noreen Johnson-Smith at 136 Dresser Hill Road. I appreciate the need for a social media policy for any business, any town, any entity that needs to control its messaging and its official public sites. I would suggest this policy is overreaching and um, paternalistic and frankly hard to police when it gets into individuals posting things on their own personal sites and requiring particular disclaimer language into postings on individuals' personal sites. I, is that legal, frankly? And is that something we want to endorse? Or is that a bit too much for any organization? Um, I work in business. We have policies about social media postings. Certainly anything you put up can be you know, used against you if, if it's something offensive to the business or uh, threatens the reputation of the organization you work for. But requiring that people drop in clauses into postings that they put on their personal communications, to me, is bizarre. Uh, thank you for sharing your, your views. Um, any, any response, Ms. Thank Noble? You. Mm -hmm. um, I just want you to know the language that's in here is not something that the town just drummed up on a whim. 
our HR director actually had been to several meetings and had looked at multiple different social media policies and had gone to actually a, uh, a workshop, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, Jessica, on uh, cybersecurity. And that's where a lot of this language has come from. So we were, we were very concerned about keeping the town safe. And perhaps it is overreaching. We can tweak it as we go along, but we have to start somewhere. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I would have Further comment? I would have difficulty supporting this unless we were to strike the uh, sections, including section A, required conduct, item one, which even with that particular disclaimer that's required in item three of the same section, required conduct, it ends the sentence with even when personal disclaimers are made. So if they're not that important and it doesn't matter whether you've made a personal disclaimer, I would suggest we strike uh, section one of part A, required conduct, and the related section eight of part B, prohibited conduct, which also includes the same language that people are supposed to insert clauses into their own personal postings. And anywhere else that that language may appear in this policy, I would recommend striking it. Someone through the moderator. Um, Mr. Cosgrove. This is a fairly new area of the law, mm -hmm. uh, and this is a very detailed bylaw, and my review was at the very, after it had been essentially, and it was somewhat limited to terminology and clarification. So what, I, what I'd recommend, frankly, and you and the prior speaker were making very good points, but you bring those to the, uh, the bylaw committee for revisions, but to try and amend pieces of this ad hoc at a meeting without reviewing the whole thing would be in my mis in mistake in my opinion. From what I've seen, the section you're talking about simply requires someone to say, this is my own opinion, not someone else, not for the town. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything wrong with that. There was a, from what I read in the paper, and that's all I know, like Harry Truman, um, there was an op police officer in a not too distant town who made some racist remarks on his personal media, and he was terminated. And that can be done. But again, it's a new area of law, and it's a very, it's a very uh, complicated one, and it's going to be something that's going to have to evolve. So the example that you cite is hate speech, which has its own sections of the law, and certainly, you know, can damage the reputation of or an organization, which for years has been used as a means of terminating people. This seems to be policing individuals' personal sites to ensure that they're using certain language, which I'm opposed to, so thank you. Thank you for sharing your views, and thank you for your advice, Attorney Cosgrove. Uh, further comments regarding Article 10, sir. Uh, Mike Sullivan, 58 Freeman Road. Um, I had a comment about uh, the last page of the bylaw, Section 11, Defamation, and uh, one is just a, a merely a, a note of, maybe it's a typo, it says, note, the foregoing is intended only as a partial, simplified summary of all the law, all regarding defamation, comma. And I, what, I'm not sure that has any meaning. The law, all regarding defamation, it, it probably just is a typo or something. And you might want to take a look at that. It appears to be a typo, but we can yeah. certainly check and, that. And that the committee can deal with that. And I want to thank the committee for, uh, this is obviously a lot of hard work has gone into this. And it's something the town obviously needs. Um, I do question whether or not this, this sentence, some statements like defamation of a crime, like imputation of a crime are defamatory per se. I don't think that would be true for a private citizen, but you know better when it comes to the officials. That's all. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, further comment or question? Ms. Walker. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, I appreciate, Deb, your work that you put into bringing this to a head and to us tonight. Um, and uh, I, but, I, but I do agree with, with what the previous speaker, Noreen, said in, in, in mostly um, that it is very overreaching. It's, it's, it makes me very uncomfortable to read it. Um, I, I think we probably do need one because everybody's telling me we need one. I don't, I, w I wonder how many other cities and towns in Massachusetts have one. Uh, is there any, are there any figures on that? 
We'll see if we can get an answer. Anyone from the board can speak to that question, perhaps? Ms. Noble? Uh, based on very recent research that I was doing this afternoon, actually, into this, right. almost all the towns surrounding us have it, as do the cities in Massachusetts, especially those that have a social media presence, which, again, we won't be able to move forward having a social media presence on behalf of the town until we have some guidelines in place, and that's really what I want us to do. Okay, I think thank we'd you. all like to. All right, like well, the question, yes, just a comment. I think it, it, from what Deb's saying and from what everybody else has said, it makes sense to have some guidelines in place. This is very big. I would rather cut it down substantially and then build it up if we have to, then come up with this um, giant um, regulation that's going to be very hard to cut down in the end. Um, I'd rather start small and work up to it as we need it um, and, um, and, and see where that goes. I'm very uncomfortable with it. Thank you for sharing your views. For the Mr. Uh, I'm, I believe Ms. Spiewak was next. Ms. Spiewak. First, I, do, I too want to thank everyone who's been involved in creating this policy. Um, it's very comprehensive, but have, having heard the comments tonight, um, I have to say I, I agree, and I wonder, should we, should we consider tabling this to the annual town meeting when we have more people here, but most importantly, to give everyone who made the comments tonight time to submit their comments and the general public to submit some more comments. And I know you've been working on this for a long time, but this way we could incorporate the, the, the ideas that were presented tonight and ideas that other people may have. Um, I, I guess I don't see the harm in it. I would hate this to get voted down. Um, but anyway, just for consideration, if we would consider tabling it. I'll second that. Thank you. Okay, so, thank you. You're welcome. So I guess that's a motion and a second, Madam Moderator. <laughs> The table um, to, to the table. annual town meeting, is that right? No, Madam, so Madam, Madam, Mr. Cosgrove. The, 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 the form of that motion as historically in Charlton and in town meeting time is to move to postpone to consideration indefinitely. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> but we have, uh, we then have a change in motion to move to postpone action on Article 10, the social media bylaw, indefinitely. Madam Moderator. Ms. Damascus. Question. Question. Is that an appropriate subsidiary motion as is, it usually is made as the main motion? That, that is correct, um, however. Madam Moderator, if you'd like, I could I, make a motion to um, basically remove my my initial motion. If, if you wish to withdraw your initial mm -hmm. motion, we can do that, yeah. but we need to have the second uh, withdrawn as well. Mm -hmm. oh. that, that was okay. I also seconded it, and I do not withdraw my second. We, we, had, uh, we had another second here mm -hmm. at, in the front table with Ms. Noble, okay? Um, with the main motion withdrawn and the second withdrawn, uh, we can entertain uh, Ms. Spiewak's motion to postpone indefinitely the action on the social media bylaw under Article 10, and that was seconded. Is there anything to be said regarding indefinite postponement? Ms. Damascus. I do not believe it is prudent for us to postpone this article indefinitely. I believe that the Technology Committee and the HR and the technical people that have been involved with this and researched 22 other towns that have similar policies are proposing a reasonable policy that will help protect the town and its employees and that the idea of lessening the policy and bringing it forward is letting the cart or letting the horse out of the barn first. We should make sure that the horse is in the barn before we lessen anything. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, further comment, Mr. Singer, was that you? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, just I agree in the need for a social media policy, but I also agree that buying a few months time to to clean this up uh, is a good idea 
get feedback from the residents. There are other components of this night, and I appreciate how much work went into this, obviously a lot. But there are some other uh, items in here that I think need to be looked at, such as the town's ability to terminate an elected official. I don't think the town actually has the legal right to do that. If they violate the bylaw, I don't think the town can fire them. So I think there are some things in here that do need to be cleaned up. And while legally we're required to use the term postpone indefinitely, the goal of everyone here is simply to postpone it a few months until May so that we can revisit this, take into account the, the feelings of the people here, and clean that up. Thank you. Madam Anything Madam. further to be said? Ms. Noble. Just, just one more thing. We did put a lot of work. The technology committee did, HR did, all the departments put a lot of hard work into crafting this social media bylaw. So the one thing I would ask everybody to do, if you've gotten up tonight and you've spoken out against it, if you think it's too onerous, too burdensome, too restrictive, I would expect that you would be contacting one, if not every member of this board and sending your thoughts and suggestions to us so that when we come back in May, we can actually say, yes, we were contacted, and yes, we incorporated everybody's concerns. Because if those concerns had been brought forth when this was posted last in, in September, perhaps we wouldn't be sitting here right now having this discussion. Thank you for your input. Anything further to be said regarding the indefinite postponement of action on the social media bylaw? A majority vote in affirmative is necessary to postpone action on this bylaw. Uh, we'll attempt to voice vote. All those in favor of postponing indefinitely, please con uh, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed by no. No. We will count. All those in favor of indefinite postponement of the social media bylaw, Please signify by raising your blue voter registration cards. All who are opposed by the same sign, please. Action on the social media bylaw is postponed indefinitely by a vote of 71 to 26. Madam Moderator? Uh, um, Mr. Singer? Uh, just a, a thank you and to let everyone here know that we will endeavor to get the uh, policy posted on the website, also make it available in our office so that uh, the public will be able to see the working document as it currently stands uh, and make their suggestions and comments. Thank you. I'm certain there will be a response. Article 11, Special Act, Remove Position of Police Chief from Civil Service. To see if the town will vote, A, to authorize the Board of Selectmen to petition the General Court for a special act reading as follows. Section 1, the position of police chief in the town of Charlton shall not be subject to Chapter 31 of the General, Bi General Laws. Section 2, Section 1 of this act shall not impair the civil service status of any person holding the position of police chief in the town of Charlton on the effective date of this act. Section 3, this act shall take effect upon its passage. 
to authorize the general court to make clerical and editorial changes of form only to the bill, unless the Board of Selectmen approves amendments to the bill before enactment by the general court. And the Board of Selectmen shall be authorized to approve amendments which shall be within the scope of the general public objectives of the petition and B, to further authorize the Board of Selectmen to take any and all other action necessary or advisable to remove the position of police chief in the town of Charlton from civil service or take any action relative thereto or thereon. Madam Moderator. Ms. Spiewak. I move that the town approve Article 11 as written. Do we have a second? We have a motion and second before us that the town approve Article 11 as written. A recommendation of the Board of Selectmen, please. Madam Moderator, the Board of Selectmen supports this article. Thank you, Mr. Singer. Is there anything to be said regarding Article 11? Madam Moderator. Mr. Singer. Uh, just for informational purposes, the majority of the Commonwealth has already made this change. The majority of the police departments in the Commonwealth have already done this. We're a little behind the curve. Um, and I was one of the, I was the one actually who brought up originally, and a lot of this came from the fact that we went through a chief hiring process and we paid a lot of money for an assessment center. After paying a lot of money for an assessment center, um, which turned out to be a very good idea, they're very rigorous, very thorough, um, they compile complete evaluations of all the candidates, and lo and behold, we weren't allowed to see them. So we could not review any of the evaluations of the candidates that they wrote for the town because they were civil service positions. All they could do is give us a score. By removing this among many other uh, uh, benefits and coming in line with the rest of the state, we actually would be able to re read the evaluations from the assessment center of the actual candidates, which we paid for. Thank you for explaining that. Anything further to be said regarding Article 11? A majority vote in the affirmative is necessary for passage. All those in favor of approving Article 11 as written, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed by no. No. The majority has it. Article 11 is passed. Article 12, a special act, remove the position. Uh, You'd like a count? Okay, we will. Uh, article 11, approval of Article 11 as written. Please raise your voter registration cards if you are in favor of approval of Article 11 as written. And please leave them up until the counters go by. Thank you. Did you get the uh, stage? Two all. All opposed by the same sign. And again, please leave your cards up until the counters have gone by. Thank you.
Thank you. Article 11 uh, meets approval as written by a vote of 61 in the affirmative and 30 in the negative. Article 12, special act, remove the position of police lieutenant from civil service. To see if the town will vote, A, to authorize the Board of Selectmen to petition the general court for a special act reading as follows. Section one, the position of police lieutenant in the town of Charlton shall not be subject to chapter 31 of the general laws. Section two, section one of this act shall not impair the civil service status of any person holding the position of police lieutenant in the town of Charlton on the effective date of this act. Section three, this act shall take effect upon its passage to authorize the general court to make clerical and editorial changes of form only to the bill unless the Board of Selectmen approves amendments to the bill before enactment by the general court and the Board of Selectmen shall be authorized to approve amendments which shall be within the scope of the general public objectives of the petition, and B, to further authorize the Board of Selectmen to take any and all other action necessary or advisable to remove the position, there should be no talking, advisable to remove the position of police lieutenant in the town of Charlton from civil service or take any action relative thereto or thereon. Madam Moderator. Ms. Noble. I move that the town approve Article 12 as written. A second. We have a motion and second before us that the town approve Article 12 as written. Is there a recommendation, please, from the Board of Selectmen? Madam Moderator, the Board Mr. of Selectmen Singer. supports the article. Thank you. Is there anything to be said on Article 12? Madam Moderator. Mr. Singer. Um, just for the benefit of everyone here, uh, the reasoning behind Article 11 is identical, uh, not sorry, 12 uh, is identical to Article 11. Thank you for that information. Mr. Sage, a comment or question? Uh, just a clarification, is the police lieutenant the second in command of the police department? Mr. Uh, Chief. Yes, sir, he is. Thank you. A uh, further question or comment, uh, sir? I am Timothy Smith, uh, 43 Casey Road, Charlton. Uh, I make a motion to postpone this uh, Article 12 as uh, Attorney um, Cosgrove's verbiage was used in uh, Article 10 so that we can look at it further. Uh, no, um, you can't. Um, you, that's the main motion again, so it would have to be withdrawn in order for you to um, make a motion of that nature. You are able to amend if you wish in some way, but what you have stated can't be accepted. Okay. Sir. Uh, Mike Sullivan, 58 Freeman Road. Um, is the lieutenant's position a bargaining unit position? We'll get that information for you, Chief. Yes. Uh, no, it is not. And when the chief, I'm sorry, just one more question, uh, Madam Monterey. Um, when the chief is absent, is the lieutenant the acting chief? Yes. Sir? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions regarding um, Article 12? Yes. Sir. And Timothy Smith, 43 Casey Road. Uh, I think there has to be a lot more conversation about this. This is uh, a lot different than the chief's position uh, where it will affect a lot more people uh, on the department. Um, and I think we need to uh, further discuss it to see, you know, if this is, is something we want to do as a whole body on the police department. Is, Madam Moderator. Um, Mr. Singer. Um, I have to make a few comments on that. Uh, number one. One of the reasons we left the entire department in civil service and didn't go down that road was we didn't want to impact the department without having a conversation with its members. And for everyone here, I think everyone needs to be aware um, that people who are speaking tonight had every opportunity to discuss this. This was brought up many months ago at a public meeting the Board of Selectmen held in, I believe, July. 
there was a member of their union there. This was brought up again in August at a meeting where the chief of police came and was asked to give the pros and the cons publicly. That was two opportunities that the members of the police uh, department had to come and participate in the process and give comments and feedback. Also, this was written about in the newspaper. That article was also pinned on the police union board in the police department. So the members of the police department have actually had many months of opportunity to express any concerns first and foremost. As far as it affecting more members of the, of the department than police chief, uh, I would argue that as well. Anyone can take the chief's test. So if they choose to take the chief's test, they can. They can choose to take a lieutenant test, they can. So the number of people affected is no different. And, and quite frankly, uh, a little disingenuous to have people come to the board and say they want to have time to discuss it and go over it when they've actually had since July when this was first brought up and it's been discussed publicly multiple times and it's literally pinned on a bulletin board in the police department. I believe the union's bulletin board. Thank you for your comments, sir. Madam Moderator, Jason Martacci, Highfield Road. Um, speaking on the union side of things, I am the union, I'm oh, sorry, union president also. Um, I do understand what Mr. Singer is saying and the fact that the union was not notified directly go to is a little bit false in what you're saying there. No, we weren't, uh, we weren't just told, and I'm not looking to get into a debate, sir. Incorrect. I never said that. So point of order, I never met a Where, I'm going Well, there was a meeting to, you stated, there was allow, a meeting. I'm going to allow the gentleman to finish his comments. If you wish to speak again, I will certainly call on you. Thank you. Sir. Okay, so we were never notified directly. I don't pay attention daily. During this meeting in July, I was on vacation. You know, I was 200 miles away. Didn't know about the meeting, unfortunately. If I had, and everybody who knows me, I would have been there. And I would have been verbal, and we would have talked about it. We could have all sat down like adults and handle this accordingly. And I didn't want to get to this level, but obviously we're going down that path now. I just want to be certain that in all of our comments, we remember that we're discussing the merits of the article only and not getting any, into any kind of personalities. Uh, Mr. Singer, did so, you wish yes, to make uh, a further uh, comment? Yes, one correction. Uh, first of all, I never stated that there was a meeting with the union. Number one, I said there was a public meeting of the board selectmen, which is true and it's recorded and it's actually streamable, you can watch it. You can watch the July meeting. You can watch the August meeting. Number two, there's no reason for the Board of Selectmen to reach out to the union to bargain something that's not a union position in the first place. This is not a bargainable position. So there's no need for us to meet with the union and bargain. Um, as far as the knowledge goes, again, I will point out that f the first meeting in July, when this was actually discussed, there was a member of the union present this was in a newspaper, and this was actually, uh, the newspaper article was pinned to the union's bulletin board in the police department. So whether someone was on vacation, unless that person was frankly on vacation for the entire month of um, July and Mr. August, Singer, they knew about that it. that comment is, is not appropriate, the final comment. So please reserve your comments strictly to the merits of the article. Uh, further comment, okay, sir? Timothy Smith. The Casey Road again. My biggest concern with this is, and, and I'll just make it simple, tomorrow we have an assessment center for a sergeant's position. There's several people that, from the department that are going to take that position. One of my biggest fears, and I'm not going to say that this is going to happen, but this is one of the things that can happen. If the lieutenant's position is taken out of civil service, if the governing body or the chief doesn't like the candidates that were brought to him from the assessment center, it's my opinion that he can then just appoint a lieutenant instead of appointing the sergeant's position and give that to somebody else and open it up to anybody, not within the department, but outside the department. And that kind of caps off anybody that wants to, um, you know, seek a higher rank 
on the Charlton Police Department as a sergeant, and it makes it more difficult for them to be a lieutenant or go higher. We're going to see people that are probably going to want to um, raise their rank or, or you know, go to a higher level in the police department, and they may have to leave the department because of that, because they won't have an opportunity here to do that. So That's th just one minor you know, problem with it in my thing. And especially where this is happening tonight, and there's probably half a dozen people going for that test tomorrow, if this passes, it almost makes that kind of a moot point if somebody's picked that, you know, isn't, um, you know, if, if they don't want to hire that person that's, uh, that's picked. All right, so your concern then is in terms of uh, promotion opportunities within the within, department? Yes. Thank you. Madam uh, Mr. Singer? So, you know, I appreciate um, his concern. The reality of that is um, the town whether it, it removes lieutenant from civil service or not does not preclude the Board of Selectmen or the town from going outside of its department. We can remain civil service and we can open it up outside the town's uh, department anyway. So we can leave it civil service and still open this up to candidates from outside of our department and that would create more competition for the position. Um, this board's position is we prefer to hire from within. So. Most of what uh, the gentleman just said, I'm sorry, but A, I disagree with, and, and half of it's inaccurate. Um, the town would actually have more ability to make better hires through this process. There are non-union positions, and the board's goal, and you know, one thing he's right about, you know, you don't know, the boards can change, but this board's goal is to hire from and promote from within. So we would choose to use an assessment center but just like we did with the chief's position when we started this process with an assessment center was keep it internal so that we have those promotional opportunities for all of our officers and our goal is to stay that way. But that certainly could change. Thank you. And that could change regardless of whether we're civil service or not. Ms. Ryan. Through the moderator, Penny Ryan for Family Circle in Charlton. Well, Charlton. Um, just a comment, um, I don't think a lot of people general public know anything about civil service, so they're just going off of what's being said up here. Um, it says a lot that we have pretty much uh, every Charlton officer here, um, and I'm 99% sure that they all just voted no, and that should say something to the town members um, that they don't understand the process. Um, I worry about nepotism um, and taking it out of civil service and, and allowing other people to have control is, is very concerning to me. Um, there's Thank so. you for sharing your views. Mm -hmm. uh, anything further to be said uh, regarding Article 12? Mr. Singer? No? Okay. I was going to, but I'm, I'm just going to let that go. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any further comments or questions? One more? Yeah. Again, Timothy Smith. Um, I agree with Mr. Singer right now. The, the council has been great. Uh, but we don't know what it's going to be further down the road, like you said. Uh, and that's my fear, is not just for my position, but for officers coming on the department later on. Mm -hmm. I always try to look ahead to see what's the worst case scenario that can happen for some other police officer down the line. One of the problems in the past, and I just use this as an example, was that uh, we had a contract that was voted in to remove um, the uh, Quinville from our um, agreement. And what happened was is we couldn't get people to come over here without that Quinville. And some years later, we had to re, again, I guess, bargain for it to come back in so that we could get more people interested in coming to Charlton PD. And that's one of the things that I fear is later on that that might you know, create another problem like it had in the past. That's Thank you. Um, yes, so in response to the two points, the first is, you know, I, I agree with him uh, on the first point. You don't know what can happen with this board. But the fact is, that's irrelevant to whether it's civil service or not. If we remove the lieutenant position from civil service, a new board could still go, could still outside of the town for a candidate. If this gets voted down and we leave lieutenants in a civil service position, a new board could still vote. 
you know, outside of the department. So whether you vote this uh, to remove lieutenant commissioners or not has at least zero impact on the town's ability to go outside or stay inside. A new board could go outside regardless of what you decide. This does not try the board's hands one or the other when the board changes or not. Thank you. Anything further to be said regarding Article 12? Although um, an, only a majority vote in the affirmative is necessary for passage, uh, just to be certain, we will do a counted vote. All those in favor of passage of Article 12 as written, please signify by raising your voter registration card. And again, please keep it up until the counters have passed. Thank you all very much.